Today, I'm very excited to be speaking with Congressman Gary Palmer of Alabama's 6th Congressional District. Representative Palmer serves on the House Committee on Energy and Commerce and is the chairman of the House Republican Policy Committee. Welcome, Representative Palmer. Thank you for speaking with me. Thanks for having me on, Amanda. So the Congressional App Challenge's mission is to inspire middle and high school students to learn to code and pursue careers in STEM and computer science. Why do you think students should participate in the challenge? Well, my big concern, Amanda, is that we're falling behind the rest of the world in that regard, and uh, particularly on the coding side. And um, uh, American investments will follow our technology. And uh, right now I'm concerned about how much of it's going to China as opposed to the United States. I'm concerned about uh, how many students in China are in STEM programs, and uh, they're turning out uh, multiple times more uh, STEM graduates than we are. So I think it's very important, not only for economy, but for the future of the country in terms of our national security, that we encourage students to go into STEM programs. Now, we have students of all coding abilities participating in the challenge. What advice do you have for students who are interested in the challenge? Well, first of all, I think they need to evaluate it in the context of, of their ability. Uh, and it might not be a bad idea to, if you're interested in being involved in the app challenge, is to work with some of the students that are already in that. And uh, uh, almost like uh, uh, a, a mentor type program, student to student, so that they can see how it's done. Uh, and I, I think once they, they get on that road, it's almost like it's a road of discovery. Uh, I think they'll, they'll uh, that they'll uncover um, their, their abilities in that area, but also, I think, uh, develop a, a real excitement for the possibilities. And you've been hosting the App Challenge since 2018. What would you say is your favorite memory of interacting with the students who take part in the challenge? Well, the coolest thing about it is, is when we first started this, I really didn't know what to expect in the context of, of apps because there's so many apps out there that I think are really not that great. You know, it's more the social media stuff. But one of the first winners that we had uh, developed an app to help identify areas in, in uh, drought stricken areas of Africa for water. And uh, that was uh, not only a, a, a practical application, it, in some respects, could have been a life-saving application. And I was tremendously impressed that not only did these uh, students have the ability to develop an app, but that they were so aware of needs around the country and around the world, actually. So that that's my one of my favorite things about the app challenge is that, that this is real-world problem-solving. And along those lines, what do you think the long-term benefits of having the App Challenge are? Well, I hope, as I said, that we'll develop a much greater interest in STEM education uh, because uh, that's where we're gonna be heading in the future of the nation in terms of our economy. And particularly here in Alabama, we have a huge presence in terms of aerospace and defense industry. Uh, there's gonna be a, a need for about 850,000 STEM-related occupations just in Alabama by 2026. And uh, we're going to be hosting the uh, Space Force Command Center here. And there are other things that I think will be coming down the pike, uh, not only for North Alabama around Huntsville, but also Birmingham, Mobile. So we're gonna have a tremendous need for STEM-educated students. And I would prefer that they be uh, Bama-born and, and Bama-educated uh, <laughs> now, the switch to online learning this past year revealed the significant digital divide across the country. As a member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, how do you think Congress should address this divide? Well, I've been a huge proponent of the expansion of broadband, particularly in rural areas. I grew up in rural Northwest Alabama, and uh, in the county I grew up in actually uh, has made tremendous advances in, in getting broadband. Uh, through the uh, local electric co-op that we've got whole sections of the state, including parts of my district, uh, 
and I live in a, uh, my district is predominantly the counties around the Birmingham metropolitan area, but we've got places that are 30 minute drives from where I live that don't have adequate broadband. I think we have to, to address that and, and it needs to be a, a top priority when we talk about infrastructure. Um, but the other thing that we learned, this is a little off topic, is that remote learning is, um, is not producing the results that we need. We, we've got to get back in, class, in the classroom. But even in, in huge parts of Alabama, getting back in the classroom does not resolve the problem with remote learning because they don't have adequate broadband. Yeah. And the App Challenge is a bipartisan initiative with support from both Republicans and Democrats. Why should members, regardless of their political affiliation, host App Challenges in their districts? The very uh, reason I gave on your first question is that uh, we're falling behind uh, the rest of the world, particularly China, in uh, STEM educated students in engineering and in, in, uh, technology and in artificial intelligence and you just go down the list, uh, I think every member of Congress should be hosting these app challenges and, and putting a major focus on STEM education uh, so that we can remain competitive in the world. And, and not only, as I said, economically, but also in terms of national security. And is there a piece of technology that you can't live without? Uh, a microwave? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> can't have popcorn without a microwave. Uh, you know, I, um, I'm not as tied to, to my technology as a lot of people, but I do a tremendous amount of research around a think tank uh, for 24 years before I got elected to Congress. And, uh, you know, the internet, like I said, the broadband, uh, being able to, to access documents, do research online, uh, I'd really be up a creek if I, I didn't have access to the internet and the ability to, to do my own research, which I do a lot of my own research as a, uh, not to diminish the, the input and uh, uh, quality of the work that my staff does. It's just I'm wired that way, having done that myself for 20 something years. So I would say uh, having um, uh, a laptop, um, handy and, and the ability to get on the internet and find what I'm looking for. And along those lines, what is the latest piece of technology that excites you? I'm uh, a person that, that likes speed, but also uh, compactness. And uh, uh, one of the things, I don't know that I get into all the apps. I don't use a lot of apps uh, because I, I try to limit uh, my uh, use of technology, because I think it, you can get bogged down in, especially the social media stuff. But uh, I like stuff that, that's um, fast and compact. Got it. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me. And to our viewers, remember the 2021 Congressional App Challenge is live, so you can register and submit your apps between now and November 1st. Thank you. Thank you, Amanda.